Okay, so uh, welcome everybody uh, to the session today. This is part of our week four of Hello Future Live series, uh, all about transition. Um, so my name is Mark and I work for Hello Future and we are hosting this event today. Um, just a few housekeeping very quickly. If you can uh, keep your mics on mute during the presentation, if you've got any questions, feel free to ask them in the chat box. And, um, and, and that's it really. So uh, I'm going to hand over to Elle and Nicola uh, for their presentation on student life. Brilliant, thanks so much. So hi everyone, my name is Elle Gentek and I'm a student recruitment assistant at Lancaster University. I'm also a graduate of the university, so I studied linguistics and English language there uh, before going on to kind of doing another job very similar to this one, uh, helping students with their progression into university and kind of telling them all about what university can offer. So along with my colleague Nicola, we're going to be doing this presentation today, which is going to be looking at student life. So I'll just quickly hand over to Nick to introduce herself. Hi everyone, so thank you for joining us this afternoon. My name's Nicola and I'm a student recruitment officer at Lancaster University. Um, so I manage lots of the relationships with different schools in the Northwest and um, usually before COVID I'd spend a lot of time on the road um, going out and presenting kind of the student life um, presentations and, and lots of different talks to help you with your progression um, in HE. Elle's actually going to start off the talk today so if you've got any questions at all whilst um, Elle is presenting please pop them in the chat and I'll be there um, to answer them um, in the chat. Brilliant, cheers Nick. So we'll get started. So what we're looking at today, so I'm first going to look at the studying aspect, so what it's like to study at university, um, because obviously that's a big part of why people choose to go to university, so what to expect from that. I'll then move into uh, getting involved, which is all the other extra things that you can get involved with during university. And so we'll be talking about things like societies and just different experiences that you might want to opt into whilst you're at university. I'm then going to pass over to Nick, who is then going to talk through uh, sort of living at university and talk a little bit about accommodation, some of the things to consider uh, before also touching very briefly on kind of some of the support services available at university as well, because Yes, university is this fantastic thing. You'll have a lovely time and there'll be lots of things that you gain from it. But we understand like just like at any part in life, things can not be the best and not be the smoothest. And so we just want to reassure you that there are people at the university that you can turn to for support. Um, we're going to be using Lancaster as obviously the kind of example to talk about, given that's the institution we're from. But a lot of this is going to be the same at different universities. So wherever you might be looking to go and study at. So as I said, firstly, looking at what it's like to study at university. Uh, so at the moment, if you're doing your A-levels or you're doing vocational courses at level three, uh, that's kind of the level you're at now. So what's it like transitioning from what you're studying at the moment to degree? Well, some of the changes include um, increased independence and freedom. Um, so in terms of what you can choose to study. So when it gets to university, a lot of courses actually allow you um, to choose topics that you want to look at. Some courses can be very prescriptive and they can be very set as to what you have to do. But there are a lot of courses out there that allow you some freedom and choice to pick different things. Um, and certainly things like if you take it, look, take a, a, an assessment, for example, like an essay, you might get choice as to what it is that you research as part of that essay. It might not be quite as set as you've been used to in previous levels of education. Quite an obvious one and one that I think you probably would have thought of increased depth of knowledge. So going into a little bit more detail around things. Um, I remember when I started studying, there was topics and I could not believe that, you know, that one little bit, you could go into so much detail about it. Uh, particularly my stu subject was looking at language. Believe it or not, defining a syllable is really difficult. But yet we all just do that automatically. So there was topics like that, that, you know, it's a real in-depth study that you won't have had chance to do before. Contact hours. So this is kind of the times that you are with a lecturer or in a seminar or in some kind of workshop when you have to be in a session for your degree. And they're kind of referred to as contact hours. And it's likely that they're going to be fewer than what you've been used to at the moment. So you'll have a little bit more freedom during the day and more time to kind of 
choose what it is you're going to do with those hours during the day. Uh, this is particularly the case if you are looking at more uh, humanities-based subjects. The sciences do then tend to have a few more kind of contact hours, but it'll still kind of probably be a different amount to kind of what you're used to at the moment. I slightly touched on there this idea of teaching styles, and I'm going to go into a little bit more detail as to what that means. But also, just like I said, this self-motivation, independence in terms of your choice, but also the fact that there's more onus on you to be in charge of your learning and to decide what it is you want to do, when you do it, how you do it, and what that looks like for you. So as I've said, your contact hours can take up different ways of teaching. The main ones at university tend to be lecture style, which is a little bit similar to this today, how there's you know, maybe one person, a lecturer, stood at the front with a PowerPoint, and they're just giving you information that you need to take in. And it's kind of often very one, one directional. So there's not often a lot of chance for you to feedback. Um, but particularly with the shift to online learning in certain certain circumstances, particularly this year with COVID, that's kind of adapted a little bit. But generally, that's what a lecture is like. Seminars tend to be a bit more similar to the classroom style that you guys are probably more used to, a bit more of group work, conversation, discussion. But then obviously, things like the sciences are going to have lab practicals where you do your own experiments and do your own research. And you might have to do some group works. You might get set a task and there's a group of you that have to do that together. And a big part of it is also then independent study. So that's on you and what you're going to do to further your study in. So looking at a couple of those in a bit more detail. So as I've kind of already described, a lecture is that kind of presentation and it often is just an introduction to a topic. There is often an expectation that beyond that lecture, you will go into a little bit more detail with your research and your reading. Um, so one of the things to think about, and you don't have to know this answer right now, because the first year at university is often that chance for you to work out how you're going to learn and sort of settle and get used to the university style of teaching. But something I know I had to kind of work out was, well, how was I going to take my notes during a lecture? Someone's talking to me at the front. How do I want to take that information in? And people do it in all kinds of different ways. I had friends who used to have their laptop and they just typed away. I personally was a bit more of a pen and paper style, uh, but I used to print off the slides beforehand and actually annotate onto the slides. Uh, so again, there might be different ways and you'll kind of adjust and work out what works for you once you get to university. The other common type of teaching is seminars. So these tend to be more smaller groups. At Lancaster, we tend not to have any more than 15 students in one seminar. Uh, and these tend to be quite discussion based. So they might be building on what was talked about in the lecture and going into more detail, or there might be a chance for you to complete some work, um, some work activities, potentially as groups or potentially on your own. But it does give you a lot more of a chance to kind of ask some more questions and kind of discuss things with other people. So in this one, you need to know how to take notes of what information has been uh, talked about and what the discussion is, but also be willing and able to kind of contribute and add to it as well. The final one I'll explain is independent study because this is a massive part of kind of university learning. And to some extent, you guys have already been kind of doing that anyway because you've had assessments that you've needed to complete, a homework as well, um, you know, revision, act, revision, all counts as kind of independent study. And also, you know, you've kind of experienced this with COVID and kind of been taken out of school and college and having to do it from home. But at the university, it definitely kind of picks up another gear and you have to do a lot more of this kind of independent study. So you have to think about what are you going to do for that time? Some of the things I tended to do was any further reading that I needed to, rewriting up my notes so that they were legible so that I could read them, uh, doing revision when I'd got S exams coming up and completing any coursework or assessments that I had as well. But the thing as well as working out what you're going to do with this time, it's, it's working out where you're going to study. So what places across the university do you want to use? Do you want to use your own accommodation? Do you want to go to the library? Do you want to go to a local cafe? Just what spaces do you want to use? And that's kind of where a lot of this freedom comes from. Whereas at lower levels of education, you often don't have the choice as to when and where you'll go and do your independent study. 
as I've said, I've already mentioned a couple of types of assessments and things that you'll work on, but at university, they do tend to be really quite varied in what you will get. And this is something to look out for when you're researching different uh, different choices. You know, what do they say about their assessment methods? How varied are they? How much do they suit you as a person? So, you know, would you be quite happy with a lot of essays or reports or quite a lot of group projects um, and presentations? So it's something else if you are researching to look into, but it's also something just to be aware of if you've already kind of made those decisions. So to give you an idea as to what this might look like, we've kind of tried to emulate what an average day in the life of a student might look like but really this is completely up to you what your days as a student look like um, but in the case of this one they had a lecture first thing so they unfortunately had a 9 a.m which you'll quickly uh, discover and decide that that is the most awful thing to have to do to get up and be ready for a lecture at 9 a.m and you'll just hate them um, They've then had some free time, so they've not got any more contact hours for a while. So they've decided to go to the library and do some independent work. At lunch, they've met up with some friends and gone to a cafe. They then had another contact hour for a couple of hours doing a lab practical for one of their modules. Um, they at, at Lancaster, we have a system where you have an academic tutor or an academic advisor. So someone in the department that you're kind of put with that you can go to and speak to about things. So things like lecturers and that they are very approachable, particularly at Lancaster. So you can go and ask questions about them. Yes, you're independent and in charge of your own learning, but it doesn't mean that you can't go and ask for help and advice when you want it. They've then gone to one of our games rooms and gone and played some pool with some friends. They've headed home, done a bit of reading, started this essay, and then they're actually now heading out for a society event to do something social for their evening. So I'm now going to move on to uh, getting involved, so things that you can take part in, because they're another big part of university life. So universities have what are called students' unions, and they have elected individuals that were either previous students at the university so have graduated just that last year or taking a break out or are doing it part time along their studies that have been elected to be represent to represent the student population to be in charge and tell the university university what the students want and kind of put things together so a lot of things that they offer is they can be people that you can turn to for support so there are another people that you can turn to and ask for advice around certain situations. They often set up lots of different voluntary opportunities if that's something that you're looking looking for to take part in. They have an overarching control of the sports clubs and the societies, and I'll come on to what those involve. And they'll also be involved in kind of the, the freshers week, that first week of university and all the different events that are part of that. At Lancaster, we also have a student owned nightclub is called the Sugar House and the Students Union own that and a lot of Students Unions tend to have their own kind of bar space that they're in charge of as well. So a big part of university life is getting involved either with sports clubs um, or societies and these are groups that you can join whilst you're at university and they are run by the students so they're not run by staff they don't have a say in how it runs it's completely done by students so you can choose to get involved in terms of just turning up to the events and the activities they run or you could actually run and be on the exec committee and be in charge of creating those events and running the society uh, and they are a really big part of kind of student life. They're a great way to meet other people, but they're also a way to kind of expand your skills and, and develop things that can be useful for the future as well. So sports can be at university for some people. Some people, they really want that part of university life. Um, but something I think a lot of people don't realize about university is you don't have to be you know, really good at a sport to take part in it. So you can tend to compete at different levels. So if it is something you've been doing for ages or you just have a particular talent for it and you want to, you can uh, go, you know, you can compete and represent the university and compete against other universities around the country. At Lancaster, because we're a collegiate university, so we have colleges within, uh, we also have kind of a, a sub-level in between that. You could your college. 
but you can also do sports as a complete beginner. You don't have to necessarily always have done the sport before. And I think that's something that a lot of people don't realize because often as you get older, people expect that you, you must have been doing it for ages. But there's lots of sports that you can take part in at university that you've probably never had the chance to do before. I certainly had never come across Octopush before which is underwater hockey. Never heard of it. Uh, safe to say, I didn't, given I'm not a great swimmer, I didn't give it a go. Um, but it, it was an option I could have done. Ultimate Frisbee, cheerleading, American football. You know, there's lots of options out there that maybe you've not had the chance to and you really want to give it a go and try it out. Uh, my best mate went for rugby union. She'd never played before. She didn't even know you had to throw the ball backwards when she started. Um, in her final year at the university, she was then president of the club. So you can just throw yourself into it and get really involved, even if you've never done it before. One thing I will mention is quite a few universities have got a whole varsity so they have a particular rivalry with another university and Lancaster's is based on the historic War of the Roses so we compete in Roses against the University of York and our competition is actually the biggest inter-university sporting event in Europe in terms of the sheer number of different events that we compete in um, and it's just a really great um, annual event that happens. Um, even if you're not into sports, all the student media uh, clubs get involved. So we have a TV station, we have a radio station, social media get involved. And so they'll do coverage and commentate and tell you how it's going, who's winning, even if they don't know anything about the sport, which can sometimes add to the hilarity of listening to someone commentate on a sport that they clearly don't understand. But it's a great thing to involve and lots of universities, as I say, do have these kind of paired rivalries. The other kind of societies that are out there are more hobbies or skills based. So again, these can be something that maybe you've been doing for a while and you want to continue it on at university, or it could be something new that you just want to give a go and pick it up. Um, I'd done dance, but not for many years. And again, I picked that up um, and I had other friends who gave uh, things like film production a go and they actually used the society that they were part of to then help them with the job. So you can get really involved. And you can learn a lot and gain a lot of experience that might be useful for your future from the hobbies and skills and societies that you might join. The final kind are what are called academic societies. So these are often linked to departments or particular courses, and they're just a great way to get to know other people on that course, both from the current year that you're in, but also the other years as well. Um, I, used, I was heavily involved in my department's one, and it was just a really useful way um, to meet other people because when you're in a lecture with hundreds of other people, you don't get to socialize and find out who they are, but by going to a society event, you could do. They often have guest lecturers as well, so it can often really help you with kind of expanding your knowledge around that subject as well. <clears throat> I mentioned this earlier, this idea of Freshers' Week or Welcome Week, as we call it at Lancaster. And this is your first week at university. And it's basically a chance for you to take part in lots of different things, find out about the different societies that are available, sign up to them, do any trials for any sports clubs you might want to join. And basically just get settled into university life and find out what it's all about. This is just an example of it. So you can see there's loads of different events that you can choose to go out, go to throughout the day. This is by no means all of the events that will have been happening, uh, but some particularly key ones to always look out for are any that offer you free food. As a student, if someone's offering you free food, take it and run with it. Um, that was definitely something that I was looking for when I was going. I was like, right, where can I get food for me? Because you know, you do also have to now potentially start cooking for yourselves. And maybe if that's not the best thing, it might be a good idea to fill up on some freebies before you kind of let yourself loose in the kitchen. OK, I'm now going to pass over to Nick to talk through living at university. Great. Thanks, Elle. Um, we haven't had any questions in the chat um, so far. So if you do have any questions throughout the um, last part of the presentation, please pop them in the chat and either Elle will give a type response or we will answer them vocally at the end of the presentation. 
So I'm going to talk to you now a little bit about living at university. So there's two types of um, university, really. There's a campus university and then there's a city university. Now, a city university is a university that's spread across a city. Um, so your lectures, your departments might be spread across um, the city and you will use the facilities of the city as well. So the gyms, the supermarkets, um, the sports centres, anything like that um, you will use within the city. Now, what I'm going to talk to you about today is actually a campus university because Lancaster is a campus university. And so that's what we know about. So a campus university is very different to a city university because it's um, all kind of self-contained so where you live where you study and um, you might be, get a part-time job on campus as well um, is all in I'm just gonna move sorry I'm just gonna move my camera view here because it's just blocking the screen a little bit that's better um, so yeah so a campus it's all kind of self-contained it's very student orientated it's an absolutely fantastic place to be fantastic place to live fantastic place to study um, because it all is student orientated all the activities and all the um, facilities on campus are all geared towards students um, so it's a fantastic place to be it's a real community um, it's like a student village really um, so a student community every Everyone's kind of like minded and um, everyone's a similar age um, so yeah it's just fabulous to be part um, of a campus university and um, there's lots of facilities on campus as well so just to give you an example at Lancaster we have 20 well over 20 different restaurants 20 different bars and um, we have two banks three supermarkets we have a um beauty salon we have a barber shop we've got a charity shop we have a bookshop we've got a cinema um, and the list can go on so everything that you need um is on campus so it's all within walking distance and within like a 10 15 minute radius so really really useful when you're living and studying in the campus to have those facilities um so close to you right on on your doorstep and with those facilities come lots of part-time jobs as well so a lot of students at Lancaster will get a part-time job on campus so in the bars in the restaurants we do have a fantastic sports center as well with a swimming pool climbing wall bouldering wall in there that you get part-time um job in obviously we've got the supermarkets we've got the beauty salon we've got um all the shops so the charity shop and the bookshop so lots and lots of opportunity there to get part-time jobs right on um the student's doorstep it is a fantastic place um to live and to study and it's a really safe place as well obviously during the day working hours you've got all the support staff well-being staff you've got the college advisors that are just on your fingertips if you do need any help and support um, with anything whilst on campus and then out of hours we do actually have um, a security team as well so if anything if you need any help with anything um, during the night time or kind of early hours in the morning um, they are there on campus with you to help and support you so that's a, a really good thing to know okay next slide so I'm going to show you the campus now and what it actually looks like. Um, so this is Lancaster campus. You can see how big it is. It's absolutely huge. It's over 500 acres um, from one side to the other. It's about a 20 minute walk. Um, you can see on the right hand side of the photograph, you've got the M6 there running alongside campus. Um, so we are really accessible if you are wanting to go home for the weekend or if you want family and friends to come up or if you want to kind of go outside Lancaster and explore um, the local kind of surroundings you can do. And then the great thing about Lancaster campus, although it's got some fantastic facilities within the campus, um, as you come out of the campus, if you turn right, you'll be able to see Lancaster there, where you can see the mouse arrow. And that's about a 10 minute, 15 minute bus ride away. And um, so it's fantastic that you have all the amenities, all the facilities on campus, but then you've got the city centre as well, just on your fingertips. If you wanted a little bit change of scenery um, or you wanted to use the facilities of um, 
um, the city as well. And then if you just look a little bit further afield than Lancaster, you can actually see Morecambe Bay in the distance there, which is absolutely beautiful. I would definitely recommend heading up to Morecambe Bay in the summer taking a stroll on the prom, getting an ice cream and just enjoying um, the summer sun. Hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll get some sun this summer so I can head up to Morecambe Bay um, myself. Um, so just heading back to the photograph of campus there. Um, if you look to the south of campus, where you can see the mouse arrow now, that's the south campus. And this is where a lot of the accommodation is. And then if you look kind of to the north of campus, this is kind of the hub of campus. And this is where a lot of the facilities are, the amenities are. There's a few, few bits of accommodation in there, but the most of the accommodation is in the south end um, of the campus there. OK, next slide, please. OK, so something that you really need to consider when choosing a university is the accommodation. Really, really important that you are doing your research um, regarding accommodation and making that choice whether you want to live on campus accommodation, whether you want to live in halls and res residence off campus, whether you want to live in privately owned accommodation. Really important. You're doing your research. You're going on the university websites and taking in as much information information as possible about the accommodation that they offer. One really important thing to note is just because the cost might be more expensive of one type of accommodation at one university, it doesn't mean that just because a cost at a different university is lower for a similar accommodation, that the quality is going to be less. Okay. Um, and Again, it means that just because accommodation is more expensive at one university doesn't mean that that quality is going to be better. Um, I remember when I was looking around university accommodation, a lot of them were a similar price and the quality really differed. There were some places that I'd be like, I would not be happy living here. And they were only slightly cheaper than other places that were really, really nice. Um, so again, that's why it's really important to do your research. If you can, definitely go to the university's accommodation or whatever accommodation you're thinking of moving into and go and have a look around and know it's not possible at the moment to do that because of the COVID restrictions but hopefully fingers crossed in the next couple of months as the COVID restrictions um, are lessened we will hopefully be able to um, go and have a look at accommodation at different universities in the meantime I would definitely make use of all the online resources that universities have put together in terms of their accommodation so at Lancaster we've got lots and lots of information on our web page lots lots and lots of pictures of the different accommodation that we offer so individual rooms share room, shared rooms on suite rooms townhouses flats um, and we also do a 360 view of those rooms as well and then we also have campus tours and I'm sure lots of other universities will be offering the same kind of resources to make sure that you've got all the information you need to make an informed decision of what accommodation you would like to choose. One thing which is really important that was important to me when I started university was whether I chose an ensuite bathroom or a shared bathroom. Now, unfortunately, an ensuite bathroom at the university I went to was so expensive and it just did not um, fall into my budget. So I had to go into a shared bathroom. And obviously the first couple of weeks, I was a bit nervous about this because I'd never shared a bathroom with people I hadn't known before. But honestly, within, you know, the first two, three weeks, these people became my best friends. Um, so please don't let it put you off. Um, you know, maybe if you've got a smaller budget, put you off um, sharing a bathroom with other people. It really wasn't a big deal at all. Um, and those people do become um, your best friends. Um, something else you might want to look at is the facilities that are surrounding your accommodation. So if there are any facilities that are really important to you, do you want to be close to your department? Do you want to be close to the library? Do you want to be close to the sports centre? So the location of your accommodation might be something that's really of importance to you. Um, really important that you have a look into the accommodation and how it works. When do you apply for accommodation? When will you start be getting all the communications about the accommodation? 
accommodation and when will you find out you've been accepted into a certain accommodation so all this information should be on all the different university websites as well next slide please So things to do before your departure, there's lots of things that you can be getting involved in or doing before your departure to make sure that you are super, super organized um, for when you kind of land um, in university in your first week. I would definitely recommend organizing a rail card. Now, I think off the top of my head, they're about 30 or 40 pounds. I'll correct me if I'm wrong here, but it's about 30 or 40 pounds to buy your rail card, which just, just seemed quite steep. But honestly, within your first couple of trips, your first couple of trips on the train, um, you'll get that money back because you'll get a third off um, your train ticket. So definitely worth looking into, especially if you feel like you might want to go home um, at the weekends or you might go home once a month. Um, you'll definitely um, see that money returned quite quickly. Um, I definitely recommend having a, a health check before you um, go to university with your local GP just to make sure everything's okay. Um, and if it isn't, then obviously you'll know um, that you'll need follow-ups at, at the university doctors um, when you're at university. So really important if you do kind of need follow-up um, checkups or, or you know, further support, you know to... Um, get on those doctor's records as soon as you can to go and find the closest um, doctors to you at the university you're going to be studying at. Something that's really important as well, which I really wish I'd done, is practice cooking on a budget. Um, I really wish I'd done this over the summer before I started university. I got to university and to be honest, it was one of the things I hadn't even thought about. I hadn't even thought about cooking for myself. I'd never had to cook for myself. Um, my mum, who's an absolute angel, would have done all my cooking for me when I was 17, 18. And when I went to university, all I lived off in my first year was things that I could throw in the oven so pizza chips like hob cooking so pasta um, spaghetti hoops baked beans all that kind of stuff and I wasn't the healthiest of students and yeah that would be definitely something I would change now if I could turn back time is um, just you know ask ask my mum to do some really simple cooking recipes with me healthy cooking reference re and um, healthy cooking recipes with me and um, that don't cost too much I really wish I'd, I'd, I'd spent that time with my mum and, and taken um, that experience and that knowledge to university one thing I really missed at university was a Sunday roast dinner and I had no idea how you were roasted chicken or how you cooked vegetables so I definitely recommend spending some time over the summer um, to practice your cooking and it's a great time as well to spend a little bit of extra time with whoever you live with at home I definitely recommend spending as much time as you can with your family and friends because as soon as you go to university your time will be filled with those new experiences studying and meeting new people and you might not have much time to go back home and spend time with your family and friends um, however technology at the moment is absolutely fantastic so you could set up a whatsapp group with them you can zoom them facetime them I definitely recommend setting up a whatsapp group with your family and with your friends if you don't already have one i am sure they would absolutely love to know all the different new experiences you're getting involved in and and what you're getting up to at university and i'm sure you also want to know what's happening at home and what your friends are getting up to especially if they've gone to different universities um i definitely recommend planning your first week so um planning when are you going to go and sign up to the doctors that's really important that you sign up to the doctors almost straight away and um, when are you going to do your first shop because remember you need food at university where is the nearest supermarket is it on campus great is it not do you have to get a 30 minute bus ride um, to the shopping centre so just really plan it out and um, think about those essential things you're going to have to do um, when you're at university in your first week and when you're going to do them. I would definitely produce a budget as well um, to help with your planning, get a spreadsheet together, write on your spreadsheet, you know, your income for that year. So that could be your maintenance loan. It could be a little bit of help from your family or whoever you live with at home. It could be a part-time job. It could be any savings that you've got from working a summer. 
um, holiday job, um, get that down on a spreadsheet and then also on that spreadsheet, put all your essential costs on there and how much they're going to cost. So your accommodation costs, your transport costs, any resources you might need, any stationery food um, and produce a really good budget plan um, just so you know you've got enough money to last you for um, your 40 weeks of term at um, university and the last one I'm going to say on here is get fit this is something again I didn't do over the summer um, and when I was living and studying in Lancaster I actually um, lived in the city centre and I walked to the uni every day and it was uphill and by the time I got to my lecture I was oh god I was red puffy faced sweaty wasn't the best version of myself um lots of students don't take their cars with them to university so this is why we suggest getting fit because you will end up walking um everywhere that you go um, so yeah, you know, go on a few walks, get a little bit fit. And it just means, you know, you're well prepared for those uh, longer walks whilst at university. Next slide, please. So one thing you really need to think about, I've just touched upon this, is creating a budget at university. So here we're going to share with you some top tips to help you budget um, at university. The first one is to get a discount card, so an NUS Extra. Um, or you could get a um, lots of universities will do their own discount cards as well. So at Lancaster, we run the purple card and this purple card gives you 10 percent. Um, off or 10 or 20 percent off um different items or different restaurants when you go into different shops in lancaster and it, it can only be used in lancaster so i'm sure lots of other university will have their own local discount cards so definitely worth looking into all the different local discounts um it can really save you a lot of money Something else we'd really recommend you doing is renting or borrowing or buying secondhand books. Now, you probably will get a reading list over the summer um, to prepare you for when you go to university. Please don't go out and buy every single book on that reading list. That's not what it's for. Um, and it will probably be very, very pricey. Some books can be very expensive. Maybe buy one or two um, and then wait till you actually get to university to see which books you'll actually need to buy by um, the libraries usually um, cater for all the books that are on your reading lists um, so you don't need to spend any money there because they're all in the library and um, a lot of universities will have Facebook buy and sell sites and on there lots of students in their third year will sell on their books secondhand and the great thing about these books is they've always highlighted the best bits and they've annotated and made their own notes and that's going to be really useful for you in your studies. Um, as I said before, have a look into getting a rail card that can save you so much money on your rail travel. Definitely avoid cash machines that charge. OK, there is no reason to get money out of a cash machine that's going to charge you. Some charge you £1.50, some can charge you £2. Over the, over the month, that could, you know, it could be £15, £20 that you spent there on literally nothing. They're charging you to get your own money out of the bank. Um, so there's no need to do that. If you do rock up to one that charges, just walk a little bit further down the street and see if there's one that doesn't charge. You can get cash back as well um, in supermarkets if you are needing cash and they don't charge you for that. Um, definitely choose a bank with the best benefits. Um, so lots of banks, if you open a student bank account, will offer lots of freebies. Um, I remember when I opened my student bank account, I got £150 back um, in cash back. Some will offer you a free or rail card, which is fantastic. Some will offer kind of insurance on your mobile phones. So just do your research and have a look at the ones that are offering those good freebies, but don't necessarily jump at the first one that offers you the best freebies. It's definitely worth looking into um, what they're actually offering as, 
as a bank, all that banky, banky stuff, um, which I had no idea about um, when I was starting university. So I did ask my parents to help me look at the different um, banking options and which was the best one. But yeah, just keep your eye out for freebies. And then the last one in here is a search for free festivals, museums and art galleries. There's lots of festivals that go ahead in Lancaster. We've got museums on our doorstep as well in Preston and Manchester and lots of art galleries. There's lots and lots of free activities you can get involved in just going up to Morecambe Bay with your friends and taking a picnic and having a stroll um, down the beach it's a fantastic day out so it will save you lots and lots of money if you just spend a bit of time thinking about what you can do that isn't going to cost you much money next slide please Okay, um, something that also might help you with budgeting is getting a part-time job because this will really supplement your income. As I've said, lots of part-time jobs on Lancaster campus, but then there's lots of part-time jobs in Lancaster City as well. And Lancaster really does support students in getting those part-time jobs. They actually have a website where they post all the part-time jobs that are available in campus and off campus as well. So lots of opportunities there for you to get a part-time job. Um, as well as it helping to supplement your income, um, it's also a fantastic way to meet new people. And it's also a fantastic way to develop those employability skills that employers will be looking for um, when you graduate. Um, I would definitely recommend if you are thinking of getting a part time job that you don't do over 15 hours um, in that job a week, just to make sure that it's not going to affect your studies. And always make sure that you can fit it in quite easily around your studies. So you have a very healthy, kind of work slash um, study life balance. Next slide, please. Okay, so the best bits of first year. I absolutely loved my first year. So these are a few things that our ambassadors, um, student ambassadors came up with and told us what their best bits were. My best bits of first year from here was definitely meeting new people. The people that I lived with in my first year are still my best friends to the day. And we live all over the country, but we do make an effort to meet up about two, three times a year. And we have a WhatsApp group where we speak to each other every single day. I think for me, living with people and sharing these new experiences with them and learning to cook with them and it was just amazing it really brings you together and you just form this really special bond that you may not have had with with other friends before so it was definitely meeting new people for me I loved my freedom I loved that I'd moved away from home now I'm from Black so I was only an hour away from Lancaster on the bus so I loved the freedom but then I loved being quite local to home that I could just jump on the bus and go back for my Sunday roasts uh, if I needed them and um, what else did I love uh, the course as well the course I chose I absolutely loved it um, and it was just a real passion of mine um, and it was just great to finally um, study something that I was so passionate about, which was brilliant. Elle, did you have any of the best parts of your first year that you could add? Oh, I mean, some of them I have to agree with. I have to agree with the meeting friends. I my my friendship group really came from my course. So it was actually who I was going to lectures and seminars with. And, and, and Nick's right, because you kind of go through a lot with them, you go through, you know, some of the stresses of kind of having deadlines and, and parts of university, but then also the really fun bits like the nights out, um, you know, you do kind of get a really strong bond with them. Um, and it's amazing how quickly you feel comfortable um, with mm -hmm. other people. Um, and that's definitely true. Like what Nick was saying about things like sharing bathrooms, the accommodation, it feels really weird at first because you don't know them, but literally I mean I remember my first year everyone was like oh I'm never coming downstairs in my dressing gown I'll always make sure I'm dressed <laughs> it got to the next morning and half of them came down in their dressing gown so yeah. people had already got that comfortable with each other and kind of gone back on the not wearing a dressing gown type thing um I would also say just some of the new opportunities that you get to take part in. So I've never really been one that's kind of, as a kid, I never was into kind of doing clubs and stuff. Like I never did brownies or guides. I just wasn't bothered. I wanted my own time, which usually involved just sitting and watching the telly, if I'm being honest. Um, 
but university gives you that chance to you know try out new things um and, and give them a go you know i gave darts a go i'd never played it before and it was just a really good laugh to meet up with some other women be on the darts team for my college and and just have that activity um so yeah there's a lot that you can gain the new location as well so i'm not originally from uh lancaster i'm actually from yorkshire so i crossed over the boundaries um something that my family i don't know if they've yet forgiven me for it um you know they always ask me how the dark side is but just that chance to go to a new part of the world that i hadn't been before um see the local area and get used to it and just become comfortable and now i can't imagine not living in lancaster and not living in this part of the world so university just gives you that chance but it's it's you know it's done in a nice way you've kind of got that bubble of university you're with other people that are also experiencing this perhaps for the first time and getting used to it so it's it does kind of it introduces it in a nice way to you so it's it's definitely something i think there's a lot that you gain from university mm. definitely yeah i would agree and i remember when i applied for university my course was four years and a lot of my friends were three years and i was like four years that's almost my whole career at like high school how am i going to get through four years of study and then it came to my fourth year and i was like i don't want to leave i want to stay it's amazing yeah. i anyway. was the same with my third year i was not ready to go i would have um, quite happily stayed for many yeah. more years me too me too um brilliant okay thanks l next slide um okay so what i'm going to talk to you about now really quickly is support that universities offer now universities really want their students to be happy and healthy students and that's why they will offer a wealth of support academically and a wealth of support and um, to support you um you know, support your well-being as well. And um, so what I thought I'd run through here is just how Lancaster can support their students. Other universities might have lots of different kind of support resources. So it's definitely worth doing your research um, at the university on their web pages in their prospectuses or you know going going along to their open days and actually speaking to staff and um, to see what kind of academic support and well-being support they offer at Lancaster we have got a huge huge wealth um, of support for our students um, so we have the chaplaincy centre this is a multi-faith center. This is fantastic to help support um, your faith, but it's also fantastic if, if you don't have a faith. Um, they are, you know, it's open to everybody. They run um, meditation um, in the afternoon on Thursdays, which is just absolutely fantastic for your well-being. I know me and Elle used to um, go over there on a Thursday afternoon on our lunch break, and I think it's gone virtual now, hasn't it, Elle? Um, which is fantastic. And um, they have beautiful kind of quiet study spaces in there and they just put lots of different activities on to really help the students and with their support and well-being and we have the medical and health services on campus as well so we have a pharmacy and we have a doctor's which is located on campus so again right at your fingertips if you do need those health services which is fantastic and we have an absolutely fantastic <laughs> excuse me um counseling team based on campus you can have face-to-face and -face, um, like one-to-one -one face to face sessions with them you can have group sessions with them virtual sessions and there's so much that they can give you online that can really help your well-being in your own time as well we have lots of learning support and um, within your academic um subjects as well you'll have an academic tutor that you'll meet with once or twice a term that will um you'll meet with them one-to-one one and they'll talk you through kind of um what's happening academically and, and try and support you any way that they can um, we have the students union welfare offices and we have academic and college advisors now we are a collegiate university and with us being a collegiate university there's lots and lots of support that comes through um, being part of a college so it's a huge benefit of being a collegiate university so we have student reps we have um, the JCR so the junior common room we've got accommodation management Managers. we've got college advisors and college uh, managers as well and we've got well-being offices 
that are all based within our colleges. Um, so it's a really fantastic support for students there being part of the college and your college will literally become your second family. And it's a smaller community within the bigger community of university. Um, and it's just fantastic for, you know, support, community and belonging as well. And of course, if, if you do, if you are struggling with anything at all academically or, you know, well-being wise at university, please do reach out. Please reach out to the different services that are available for you. That is why they are there at university to help and support you. And also reach out to your parents and friends as well. Um, they will want to know what's going on and they will want to be able to help you um, through wh whatever's happening. OK, next slide, please. Oh, so, okay, okay, so some final thoughts now. University will, what, will be what you make of it, so make the most of it and enjoy. I can't stress how important it is to kind of throw yourself in at the deep end. Yes, it's all about your studies. Yes, it's about going to your lectures and your seminars and doing the best that you possibly can academically, but it's about the whole other side of university, all the new experiences you can get involved in, all the societies, all the new hobbies you can take up. I started cheerleading in my first year at university 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 had never done it before it was rubbish but I made some really good friends and um, lots of different trips that you can take part of it really is the most incredible experience but you need to make it that incredible experience by getting involved one top, top one top tip from me is in on your first day of university, get a door stop and actually wedge your door to your bedroom open because you'll hear throughout the day other people moving in, they'll be up and down the corridor and your door's shut and you're like, oh, I don't want to go out there, it's too scary. But if you open the door, you really break down that barrier and you'll see people walking past, you'll wave and say hi, some will pop their head in and it's just a great way in those first couple of days to kind of find your feet and get settled and break that kind of barrier down that might be a little bit daunting next slide please so we have a fantastic resource on our website. So if you've got any questions at all after today regarding student life or progression into HE or about any subjects at all that we offer at Lancaster University, you can actually chat to our student ambassadors on our website and you can see the link at the bottom here on the left hand side and um, you can filter the student ambassadors that you speak to. So if you want to speak to a math student, you can make this a filter, ask them any questions you have about studying maths at Lancaster or if you just have any general questions about progression into HE so student finance student well-being student support you know writing your personal statement we have students on here that are more than happy to help answer any single question um, that you have and then we also have our digital content ambassadors so you can see on the right hand side of the screen here that is the um, link um, to that part of our web page I would definitely recommend having a look on that if you are interested in studying at Lancaster because they are continually creating this digital content to tell you all the fantastic things about Lancaster so what they've getting up to what kind of events are they going to um, and they upload lots of pictures and lots of videos about studying abroad and um, all the different experiences that come with studying at Lancaster so I definitely check that web page out for a little bit more information and a real good insight into student life at Lancaster next slide please so lastly, to end on, we do have some upcoming webinars that are going to be really, really helpful if you want a little bit of a taster of some subjects that we offer at Lancaster or you just want a little bit of help and support or more information about Lancaster or even support with your progression into HE. So we've got some events coming up where you can actually speak to our Lancaster students. We've got some subject taster sessions coming up in biomedicine, engineering, math, chemistry, social sciences, and we also have have a live streamed campus tour on the 26th of May, which is fantastic. The live stream campus tours are actually led by our student ambassadors. They are completely live and they'll be taking you around campus as it looks on that day. Come wind, rain, shine, um, you'll be able to see campus 
and exactly what it looks like on, on a normal day um, to a student. So I definitely recommend um, having a look at that. We do have lots of other events coming up in June and July, and you can check these out on our Connect um, website page. So you can see the link there at the bottom. Okay, so that is it from me and Elle today. Thank you so much for attending. I hope you found the information really valuable and um, really, really useful. Um, I think there's been some questions in the chat. I could see them popping up on my screen. I'm not sure whether they've all been answered yet. So Elle, am I all right to pass on to you regarding the chat where we're up yeah. to? So we had a couple of questions. So we had, uh, which I have answered in the chat, but for the benefit of, um, you all I'll just kind of reiterate them because they are some really common questions that we get asked so in terms of at Lancaster getting between the university and the city centre is really easy there are public buses that run every 10 minutes during term time so it's really easy to get between the two and lots of students and staff members do use them uh, because a lot of students in their later years will live in the city um, and students can also get a discounted bus pass um, so if they're going to be using the bus regularly Early, then they can use that to, to get between the two um, otherwise you can walk it if you're up for a little bit more of a longer walk I managed to do it in 40 minutes which I'm quite impressed with myself for so I'd maybe say if you're a little bit more of a slower walk maybe like an hour but that is literally to get from campus right down to the bottom end of the city centre the other question we had was asking just about collegiate universities and what that means. Um, so there's only a handful of universities that are collegiate. Um, I think common examples that you might have come across are the likes of the University of Oxford and the University of Cambridge, York and Durham as well as obviously Lancaster are examples of them. So it basically means that the every student is a member obviously of that university but then they might also be they will also be a member of a college within it which is just a smaller community it kind of adds another level of kind of support as we've said of who you might turn to events and activities that are run so there'll be ones going on for the wider university but also the colleges individually will be putting on events as well so they do a big end of year party as well they might have a winter ball around christmas time but also just run various activities and events that, and trips that you might choose to go on during the year so it just adds another thing uh, that range of events and groups of people that you can meet with and you kind of identity so which college you're a member of is a really big thing about it um whenever you meet whenever i meet anyone else i find out they went to lancaster university I, the first thing I need to know is which college they were in. I don't know why, it just feels like I need to know that information about them before I can decide whether I'm going to continue this conversation <laughs> or not. Um, so it just adds another element, I think, to university life and, and adds those extra um, experiences. But you can be as involved with your college as you want. So you don't have to turn up to the event. You don't have to get involved. You don't have to take part. But if you want to, you know, there's those extra opportunities that you can do. And like I said, it was the college darts team that I went for. So I never would have been allowed anywhere near the university one because I was rubbish. But the college level were like, yeah, it's OK, we can take you. You can play darts with us. So it does, as I say, give you that those different opportunities that you might want to get involved with. Great. Fabulous. So is that all the questions? Yes. Brilliant. OK, well, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Really hope that you found this useful. Um, so we just want to wish you lots of luck in your future and your progression to HE, whatever university you decide to go to. Um, so, yeah, good luck, everybody, and take care. Yeah, best of luck, everyone. Brilliant. Thank you very much, uh, Elle and uh, and. Uh, um, sorry, Nicola. Nicola, um, <laughs> it's all right, don't worry. Trying to figure the name there. Uh, that was brilliant. And I was just uh, thinking about like my student life when I went to Newcastle. And also, L, I uh, played darts at university. Oh. But, um, so it was great hearing that, another kind of fellow darts person. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I hope you found that uh, really useful. Uh, and that concludes our transition um, sessions for this week. Uh, next week is all about uh, virtual open days and open days and preparing for them. Um, so we've got sessions from Lancaster again, Edge Hill and ourselves doing our own session as well. So feel free to have a look at them 
and uh, see what they're like. Um, uh, thank you. I think we're doing a session on Thursday. We've got one at one at one and then one at six. It's been moved to the evening slot. So yeah. me and Elle, we're doing that, aren't we, Elle? The yeah. six o'clock one. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. The, perfect. Yeah. yeah. We've uh, moved them till six o'clock, the later ones, to make it a bit easier for everybody. So hopefully we can see you there. Um, yeah, perfect. Now, uh, I'm just putting in a, um, a feedback form in, so feel free if you'd like to uh, fill it in. It'd be great to hear about your thoughts and how the session went, and we can improve some of the events that we do uh, later in the, in the future. Um, wow. Where will, it, will we be emailed the feedback form, or was it put in the chat? Right, okay. I'll put it in the chat, and then we're going to also email it out along oh, the fab. recording okay. of the session as well, so uh, everyone can also have a look over this fantastic session again. Okay, thank you. Brilliant. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Everyone. Thanks, Bye. Al. Bye. Bye. Brilliant.